do not be afraid. Both of our lessons this morning begin with some variation of that message that we hear again and again in Scripture. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. Now, fear is a natural, powerful, and primitive emotion. When we register something that feels like a threat, our brain kicks into high gear. The amygdala, the ancient part of the brain, which plays an important role in the processing of emotions, including fear, releases stress hormones. Blood pressure and heart rate increase. Breathing becomes faster and more shallow, and even blood flow changes. Blood actually flows away from the heart and into our arms and legs, getting our bodies ready to throw punches or to run for our lives. When our fear reaction is triggered, it triggers this phenomenon known as flight or fight. And all of this activity in that part of our brain causes other parts to shut down. So when the amygdala senses fear, the cerebral cortex, which is the part of the brain that harnesses reasoning and judgment, begins to shut down. And all of this happens in an instant, before we even have time to process it. Other parts of our bodies go into primal reaction as well. Fun science fact I learned this week is that goosebumps, that involuntary shudder that makes our hairs stand on end, is actually a protective response against fear. While it makes little difference to us and to our appearance, for many animals, it makes them seem larger, more formidable, a bigger threat to whatever is threatening them. And all of this makes absolute sense from an evolutionary perspective. Our bodies are amazing and wonderfully made. Fear is essential for the survival of a species, and that helps to explain why our fear response tends to be a little extreme. It makes sense that we should be jumpy if we are an animal that's trying to avoid being eaten. Better to react and run and hide when your body raises the alarm bell than to presume that something is not a big deal and find yourself eaten by a bear. But here's the thing. Our brains haven't evolved all that much to take into account that humans don't deal with imminent physical dangers so much anymore. Even in Jesus' time, our brains react similarly to anything we perceive as a threat to our safety. Psychologically, socially, emotionally, real or imagined. So our bodies react the same way whether we're about to be eaten by a lion or we're simply afraid that we're going to mispronounce amygdala in our sermon in the morning. And for those of us who struggle with anxiety or panic disorders, we know only too well how hard it can be to short circuit those over-functioning brain signals. Now, I don't know if Jesus understood the biology of the brain in the way that we do today, but clearly he understood the power of fear to get in the way of people's ability to live the lives God wanted them to. He clearly knew what happens when people lead with fear. Our reasoning and judgment go out the window. We shut down. We become much less capable of making good choices. We get aggressive and defensive. Our primitive lizard brain kicks in, and we lose sight of everything else around us. We either run and hide, figuratively or metaphorically or actually, or we stay and fight, puffing ourselves up to appear bigger, stronger, more formidable. All of the things that are built into our system to protect us are put into action at the expense of everything else. And in the case of our gospel this morning, that includes pursuing the kingdom of God. Don't be afraid, little flock. It is God's pleasure to give you the kingdom, the kingdom of God. This kingdom, this way of being, this place where God, which operates by God's value of love, compassion, and healing. It's not just some future event that awaits us in heaven, but rather, as Jesus taught, 
It's already here in our midst, and it's up to us to continue to establish it, doing all the things that Jesus calls us to do, praying, caring for those in need, seeking the common good, healing, reconciling, looking for Jesus everywhere. And we can't do that if we're overcome by fear. So we hear, be not afraid, over and over and over again in our scriptures, but lest you think that that is merely a command to shut down our natural God-given instincts, think again. Because whenever we hear, be not afraid, or have no fear, or fear not from God, or Jesus, or God's messengers, it's never a standalone com command. It is never meant to be a condemnation of our feelings. It's not a criticism of our beloved, if not entirely evolved, nervous systems. It always comes with a reminder that God is with us, and so we don't have to be overtaken by fear. In our first lesson this morning, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. The 23rd Psalm, I will, feel no, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Don't be afraid, little flock. It is God's pleasure to give you the kingdom. It doesn't mean that there aren't things to fear in this world. It's not to say that if we believe hard enough that we'll be spared the trials and tribulations that come with being on this earth. Not at all. But we go forward with God. I often quote theologian Frederick Buechner, who speaks of God's grace with these words. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. For some reason, I, along with most people who use this quote, forget to add what comes next. I am with you. Nothing can ever separate us. It is for you I created the universe. I love you. Jesus understands that the life living out the kingdom is scary. It calls us to resist everything the world tells us about protecting ourselves, defending ourselves, planning for ourselves. And he says, don't let that fear get in your way. Today's gospel goes on to tell us instead that we should be alert, be on the lookout for Jesus. It calls us to this level of alertness, of readiness, a tuning in. And to be honest, it can raise our anxiety levels again. Be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be on guard. It's enough to start my amygdala revving up a little bit. But it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be anxious, fear-filled waiting, but rather this waiting in faith that God is present a staying vigilant and taking action, living lives of generosity, combating poverty, ending hatred, establishing peace, keeping our lamps lit and looking for signs of where God is leading us. That's where we find Jesus, or where Jesus finds us, and the blessings start to abound, and we come close to the kingdom of God. In the name of the one who loves us and has given us life. Amen.